This builds upon the concepts we've covered already in our previous FPS Explained video. So if you have trouble following along, be sure to watch that first. Okay, so before you go out and purchase some upgrade parts and start dumping money into the thing, here's a couple things you need to do. First, you want to research the fields that you intend to play at. If you're going out to a sanctioned airsoft field, it's your responsibility to know their posted rules. They're going to list their FPS limits ahead of time, either in feet per second or in joules, and they're going to measure with a specific BB weight. Now, if you purchase a gun brand new out of the box, the retailers will try and list the FPS specs based on what's provided by the manufacturer, but ultimately, the retailers, such as us, aren't responsible for the actual performance. If you get a gun that shoots harder than what the field permits, that's on you to address that. I would highly recommend you verify the specs before you go out and play with it by either using your store's chrono or seeking a local tech to verify for you. Now, factory specs are always subject to change. That can happen with a new batch or some changes in production. And the FPS that's advertised is not always a guarantee, at least not exactly. The guns will always shoot with a variance in FPS from shot to shot. So if they only list a single number, just take that as a rough range and not an actual exact result. Your gun's condition, barrel length, number of other parts installed will all affect the final result. Just remember as you proceed with upgrades and modifications, that'll avoid your existing warranties and your ability to return your airsoft gun to the store. If you don't know what you're doing, seek professional help first. Hello everyone, this is Tang with Fox Airsoft here and today I'm gonna to talk about upgrade springs. So a lot of questions we get are, what kind of springs do I need for my gun? What kind of upgrades do I need to support it? So I'll cover that today. The spring is the primary part that's responsible for the power behind your electric gun. And this works in conjunction with your compression parts, which are not covered in this video. You will want to verify all your results with a chronograph. A chronograph is a device that measures the speed and power of which your airsoft gun is shooting. Okay, first of all, when you're choosing a spring for your gun, first you have to decide if uh, the gun is doing what you want it to do as far as FPS goes. If you need it to go more, you're gonna obviously need to find out what your limits of the field are and then upgrade accordingly. If you need to go lower, you just simply find a spring that's gonna match the FPS that you want for your field. Just remember that FPS is not a goal, it's a limit. Uh, keep that in mind as we're upgrading our guns, we truly want to be uh, safe and respectful to other players. We're not out there to hurt other players. We're just trying to get some more performance out of the gun and try to keep it reasonable. So with that in mind, let's talk about what kind of springs might you want. So the springs you'll see, first of all, various different brands. You'll see an S rating, M rating. What does all that mean? Springs here will typically be rated as meters per second since all of these parts are produced in Asia. So they kind of use the metric system. And the quick and easy way is just to use that number as a meters per second. Some springs might say S, um, means the same thing literally, so uh, ignore the S part and just worry about the meters per second. Now the performance of your gun, how it's built, the porting, barrel combination, all that stuff's going to play a small factor. So that number is just a quick and dirty um, reference, it's not a guarantee. Here's an example of indoor field limits, which is either gonna be one joule or 350 feet per second with 0.20 gram BB. Spring I would get would be anything under an M100. Your results with springs under that rating will get you anywhere from 0.9 to 1.0 joules or about 300 to 350 feet per second with a 0.20. Your typical outdoor field in America might adhere to a 1.5 joule limit or something about 400 FPS with a 0.20 gram BB and the spring I would get would be about an M110 to M120. That'll yield you about a 1.2 to 1.5 joules or about 360 to 400 FPS with a 0.20. Knowing that some M120 springs are pretty stiff out of the box and with a lot of guns coming with tight bore barrels installed now, I would probably start with an M110, chronograph it, and then see what I get from there. If you're having someone install the spring, just be sure to let them know not the spring type that you need, but the FPS or joule limit that you're shooting for so that they can make the best determination. As far as durability goes, going to a lighter spring will actually 
probably ease the wear and tear on your gearbox. If you go to a spring that's stiffer, then you're actually adding wear and tear. So keep that in mind, your guns won't last forever. And the harder you push it, then the more wear and tear you're introducing. Well, the inexpensive ones get the job done, but they aren't really heat treated. So if you want some durability and keeping the tension longer, then I would spend a little bit more and get something like the Modify Springs, which will uh, be heat treated and be stronger. These won't snap and they take longer to wear out. That said, they do come kind of stiff. So if you are over on your FPS, then you probably won't get, get it to break in as easily. And you might want to just go down one spring rate. Be careful. There are different springs for AEGs and sniper rifles. The sniper rifles are a whole different animal, different length and different diameter. So most of the time it'll be AEG springs that you'll find anyway, but just keep an eye out on that. Some sniper rifles actually use AEG springs, so that's kind of handy too. All right, so that does it for my little bit about AEG springs. Hopefully that gets you in the right direction. If you have any questions, uh, just remember everyone's build and situation and requirements are gonna be a little bit different. So consult with your local techs first, or you can reach out to us before you purchase it. That way you get the right thing. I'm Tang from Fox Airsoft. I will see you guys in the next video.